So I'm back today to show you the different perspectives of the earth based on the different seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. So you have to be able to identify the different seasons based on the orbital perspective, the North Pole perspective, the equatorial perspective, or really even need to make sure you understand how to navigate the dome in which you're gonna draw the sun's path here. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time showing you how to do this. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be a very effective tutorial to give you assistance on this pretty challenging topic. One thing you wanna make sure you understand is the difference between a season and a date. So I know that this is the winter season and I'm actually gonna start out, I'm gonna bounce around a little bit with the different pictures. I'm gonna start out with the equatorial perspective because what you wanna look for is you wanna look for that North Pole in conjunction with the sun, the insulation, the sunlight coming in from the right, if that North Pole is tilted away from the sun, this has to be winter time. This is the season that we're looking at, it's winter. What's the date? Well, we wanna talk about the first day of each season, and this is going to be December 21, 1221. This is what we call the winter solstice. Solstice is Latin, which means the sun standing still. This is the lowest point the sun is gonna be in the sky, at noontime, winter solstice, the sun standing still at the lowest point in the sky. Now, if I know that this is going to be winter because my North Pole is tilted away from the sun, you never want to say the Earth is tilted away from the sun. You want to look at the seasons from the North Pole perspective and the Northern Hemisphere perspective because the Southern Hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. So it's their summer while it's our winter. I'll get to that in a moment. If you look at the orbital view, you always want to look at the two positions, either left of the sun or right of the sun. If you look at the North Pole on the left, is tilted towards the sun. That has to be summer. The North Pole is tilted away from the sun. This has to be winter time. So winter from the orbital perspective is on the right in this instance. How do I know from the North Pole perspective that this is winter? Well, the North Pole is in 24 hours of darkness. When the North Pole doesn't get any daylight, you know it's going to be winter time. Now let's go down to probably one of the most important viewpoints is going to be the equatorial perspective. So again, I just told you that the North Pole is tilted away. So this is 24 hours of darkness at the North Pole and the Arctic Circle. Look, knows that. that. That latitude, they, they don't get any daylight at all. This is your nighttime side. This is daylight. And I know that because that's my terminator. The terminator is gonna separate the darkness on the left with my daytime on the right. My sun's coming in from the right side. So if this is 24 hours of darkness at the North Pole, this has to be 24 hours of daylight at the South Pole, which means it's their summertime. All right, let's kind of go down some of these latitudes. Not all of these latitudes you really need to know for these respective seasons, but New York is going to be one of them you're going to want to have a little bit of a handle on. So we obviously we have our 24 hours of darkness at the North Pole and the Arctic Circle. New York, look at most of the latitude in New York is in darkness. That's 15 hours of darkness. and nine hours of daylight. So we call this the shortest day of the year in New York State. So that's the shortest day. We're not knocking off any hours of the day, it's still 24 hours. We have the shortest amount of daylight hours in New York. So 15 plus nine is still 24, but it's the least amount of daylight hours that we have. Then the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Cancer is gonna come up very important. We don't really have to worry too much about the daylight hours here, but Tropic of Cancer will show up again in summertime. The equator, the equator means equal. 12 hours of dark, 12 hours of daylight. Equal, 12 and 12. Now the Tropic of Capricorn, that's gonna be an important latitude here. Because what's going to happen is this is going to be 
the point where the sun is at the zenith. The zenith means it's 90 degrees above the observer. So that little symbol right there means it's a 90 degree angle above the observer. So you're, you have direct insulation. Insulation just means sunlight. Incoming solar radiation. That's actually what it stands for. Which means that the sun is going to be at the zenith, which is going to be directly above the observer. Highest point in the sky. Well, that, make, that makes sense because it's the summertime in the south. Anytime the sun's high in the sky, it's going to be quite warm. So if the sun's 90 degrees above the observer, that's going to be a pretty warm season, pretty warm day, whatever it might be. For us, the sun's out for a very, very short amount of time, not enough to really warm us up. The sun's going to be really low in the sky. That means it's going to be quite cold. So cold in the north, warm in the south. 1221, winter solstice. Orbital view, north pole point of view, equatorial point of view. All of those are very, very important there. Okay, then we're going to work our way down to the sun's path. So the one thing about the sun's path, you have to know how to draw these. These are really, really important to draw. You find them on the Regents exam all the time. And I want to show you a couple little tricks on how to figure things out. Well, first off, the only direction you're going to look north, anything in the sky, this arced dome right here represents the sky. The flat area that's kind of the oval here, that's going to be a field. So that could be any kind of field, any kind of flat area. I'll put a little observer here. Is on the field. They're going to look up in the sky. They're going to be able to identify the angle to some of these objects. The, really, the only thing in the sky you're going to look north is going to be Polaris. And if we're in New York State, New York has a multitude of latitudes, but 42 tends to be a really important latitude. So if Polaris is at 42 degrees, that's the altitude of Polaris. That's going to equal 42 degrees north. That is the observer's latitude. So altitude and latitude, they're the exact same number. Altitude is just a degree in the sky, while the latitude is a degree north of the equator. So Polaris is always going to be in the northern sky. And you'll see my, in my upcoming videos, I'm going to do Polaris everywhere that we go. In the southern sky, that's where our sun is going to come in. So we need to kind of figure out where our sun's altitude is going to be. So there is a mathematical equation that you can figure this out. If the sun's highest point is 90 degrees, that's the zenith. And our latitude is 42 degrees north. If you subtract them, you get 48 degrees. Okay? Now, 48 degrees, that is going to be the sun's altitude. That's going to be for spring and fall. Now, what I do is I, if I want to get the winter, the winter is going to be lower than 48. If I take the 48 degrees and I subtract the tilt of the axis, 23.5, that's going to give you 24.5 degrees. 24.5 degrees is the altitude of the noon sun in winter. The sun is always going to be in the southern sky. 24.5 degrees. Very, very, very low angle to the sun. That's why it's so cold. Now the sun rises between south and east. This is sunrise. Southeast, it's going to set in the southwest. Now what I do is I connect them. Southeast, up to my 24.5, back down to southwest, rising, setting. That's nine hours. It's a very, very, very small path. So the fact it's such a small path indicates that the temperature is going to be quite small. It's going to be a very, very cold day and a very cold season when you have this low of an angle of the sun. Very, very short path. 
Now, because we have such a short path and we have a very, very low angle to the sun, the observer's shadow is going to be quite long. And that observer's shadow points north. So you're going to have a long noon shadow. Anytime you have a very low angle to the sun, you're going to have a very long shadow. And that shadow points north. No matter where that sun is going to be, the shadow is always opposite. So if the sun is rising in the east, your shadow points west. If your sun's setting in the west, the shadow points east. If the noon sun is in the south, that shadow points north. So we got a little bit of everything here. We have the noon sun altitude, show you how to figure that out, where it rises and sets. The noon altitude, there's our shadow. We have the altitude of Polaris. I think we've covered everything for winter time. So hopefully this is something that you can go back and use. And again, if you ever need to come back and draw one of these or come back and check out this video again, you want to really master this concept. This concept is incredibly important. It shows up on the regions all over the place. So please make sure you check out my other seasons. This is for winter 1221. Thanks for joining me, guys. Talk to you soon.